Hey, what's going on YouTube? So last night, um, I lost power and you know what? I was ready for it. So in this video, I'm going to give you a couple, uh, tips, uh, tips and tricks, you know, to, uh, be ready for when that power goes out because when power goes out and you have a reef tank, it's bad news. You got about four hours before your fish start coming to the surface and they're running out of oxygen. So, um, a little backstory. So last night, uh, about 10:30, the lights went out, and I just kind of laid there for like five minutes, you know, to see if it would come back on. Wasn't coming back on, so I checked, uh, you know, the Consumer Energy website, and it was out, and they didn't even know it was wrong yet. So your first step when your power goes out is whoever your power company is, get on their website and report the outage. Because this actually happened to me where I work, uh, the power went out and, you know, I started doing all my procedures at work, you know, when the power was out. Um, and then when I call Consumers Energy, like an hour later, they had no idea the power was even out. So, um, and it ended up a squirrel was in the transformer. So, <laughs> But anyways, um, so your first step you want to do is report that power outage so they know um, and they get a crew out to fix it. So with, uh, with the most of the, of the major power companies, you get on their website, you report it, and they'll actually like send you updates on your phone. So it's kind of nice. Um, so that's what I did last night. You know, I got on my phone, reported the outage. Um, and then you got to start thinking, you know, think long term, like think at least like six to eight hours. And uh, I live in the city, so um, we've had power outages before and nothing's really lasting more than six hours. So that's usually what I prepare for. Um, but there's a couple things that you might want to think about. Uh, getting to prepare for a power outage and some of those things you might even have laying around your house so uh, what I do is I have like a, a spot in the garage where I just have like a little power outage kit so um, I'll kind of walk you guys through what I'm talking about and most of it's pretty simple stuff but um, the first thing that I would recommend that you guys would want to look into is getting yourself a spare car battery and preferably a deep cycle marine battery. Um, these are meant to run um, for a long period of time. So, uh, and then you want to actually pick yourself up a small power inverter as well. And Preferably get the ones with the battery connections. So, and this is assuming you don't have a generator. Um, I actually do have a generator. So this is like my backup to my generator in case for some reason it won't start. But, um, so get yourself, get yourself a deep cycle marine battery, a power inverter, and depending on what you want to run, that's what you kind of want to think about. If the power fails, what do I want to run on my tank? And for me, it's the return pump, the protein skimmer, and at least one power head. And that, if it's a six hour time, that's, that's definitely going to get you through. Um, if it's going to be like a long time, like maybe a day or two days, you might want to think about running your calcium reactor or you know maybe one of your lights or something like that so you kind of plan like what do I run what do I want to run if my power goes out so um, for me I can easily with this setup right here I can run my return pump which is like 85 watts both my power heads that's about a hundred watts and then my protein skimmer, which is like 40 watts. So it's like, you know, 220 watts, 230 watts total. So this 400 watt power inverter, that's, that's more than enough. I can actually throw something else on there if I wanted to. I could actually throw my uh, calcium reactor on there if I wanted to. So, um, 
in this setup right here, um, it's all depending on what kind of battery you get. If you get a, you know, a really good deep cycle battery, um, you could run probably that up to about like 10 hours. This will run about eight hours on the wattage. So um, now if you're really desperate, if you do not have a generator and you do not have a like an extra car battery or anything like that and you don't have any battery backups on your pumps and you have a car that car is basically like a small generator um, you can get if you have a power inverter hook this up hook that up to your car battery hook up your tank for like a couple hours let it run turn your car on for a little bit let it recharge and just keep repeating that process um, now that's if you're really desperate hopefully it never gets to that point but um, if you're like me I mean I got a ton of time a ton of money in my system and I'm not gonna lose it over like a one-day power failure so I'm gonna do what I got to do to get it done um, I have a generator so I mean it you know that'll get me through long term always have a couple gas cans in the garage you know ready to go start the generator up like once every other month make sure it runs um now like your parameters as far as your water um you want to keep temperature stable so uh you know it's summertime right now so uh one thing you could do is if it's still hot and your temperature rising in your tank um you know get some like uh, one gallon uh, freezer bags and then if your fridge has an ice maker you know fill those bags up with ice put it in the tank let it cool back down you know and repeat that process you know or if you got to run to the gas station get yourself a bag of ice you know and, and do it that way um, and if uh, your tank needs heat um, make sure you get a decent size um, power inverter that will actually run a heater so i think i had to do it once in the winter and that's how i had to bust out my generator because i had to run the heater some pumps and things like that so it was like seven eight hundred watts but <clears throat> i mean there's a lot of things that you can do during a power outage and you know having if you have any of those things laying around our house just uh you know just keep those in mind you know we've had a lot of severe weather here that's it's just kind of wreaked some havoc lately and um uh, you know it's kind of a pain in the butt but you know last night it was actually it, it was fairly painless so and oh also one thing um, if you're running a controller like a Neptune Apex um, I would not recommend plugging those into a generator um, I would just power I would just plug your like your uh, you return pump and your power heads directly into a, like another power strip and powering it that way. Um, generators, you know, they it, 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 they don't recommend that you plug in sensitive electronics to those unless you have like a really, really good generator. Um, <clears throat> so if I were to fry my, you know, my controller, <laughs> that would be pretty bad. So, and then also make sure you have like all of your cords and like your plugs marked so when the power does go out and you're in there with a flashlight um, it's easy to find okay that's this is my return pump you know this is my skimmer this is my power head you know things like that it's just going to make it a lot easier so i remember last night you know i'm like oh crap you know but i got down there and all my you know all my things were marked and i actually have a sheet that tells me what i have three uh eb8 um, power bars so I have a, like a sheet that's marked with like what each, what each plug is. So I just found that sheet and I'm like, okay, I'm pulling this one, I'm pulling this one, I'm pulling that one. So, but um, yeah, those are just some, uh, some helpful tricks, some tips. And uh, you know, if you like this video, hit that like button and uh, please like and subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.